The Judge Samson, whose story is told over four chapters in the book of Judges, has to be one of the most interesting characters from this period in Israel's history. From the angelic announcement of his birth to the tumultuous relationship he had with the Philistines, Samson was a man with much promise and a high position, but a weakness for Philistine women that would ultimately cost him everything. In chapter 16, we're told the story of Samson and Delilah, the last of the Philistine women in Samson's life. Delilah's persistent manipulation led to Samson giving up the secret of his strength, and for the remainder of his life, he served as a Philistine slave. To me, Samson's life is a vivid reminder of the presence and the power of temptation in our lives. The Bible tells us the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And whether you're a ruler in Israel or waiting tables on Pensacola Beach, his target is exactly the same. It's your relationship with God. We learn from the life of Job, another Old Testament great, that the enemy is always watching us. He's constantly assessing our weaknesses, and he even knows our names. And he attacks us at our most vulnerable, just like he did with Samson. And listen, I'm not suggesting that your eyes will be gouged out and you'll be regulated to a life of cruel servitude. But life apart from God is no life at all for the follower of Jesus. And our enemy is a powerful foe. Samson's story left me with one important question. Who did this judge of Israel surround himself with? The biblical account makes me think Samson was a loner, a guy who let his prominent status, great strength and lust for women, distract him from the company of other godly men. So if there's just one thing I would encourage you to take away from Samson's story, it's this. Don't go through this life alone. God made you and I to be in fellowship with him and to be in relationship with those who are committed to and submitted to Him. Surround yourself with those people. Let them encourage you and challenge you and stir up God's Spirit within you to do good works. Don't throw away the promises of God or the position of favor He has given you in Christ for any of the temporary pleasures this world has to offer.